My name is Fred McNeil and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We've been very lucky. We have a weekly veterans show called Thank You for Serving. I always mention to you there are 3,353 veterans in Queen Anne's County, men and women. Some of them have stories that are just unbelievable. My favorite story right now, uh, teller, is Clinton. Clinton, I'm going to have you introduce you in a second. Yeah. Certain people, we, we were reading a book by uh, Admiral uh, McRaven, I think his name mm -hmm. is, and he was the head of the SEALs, mm -hmm. four stars. This guy's in a capture of bin Laden. Mm -hmm. He's in any crisis we've had the last 20 years right. in America where they call it special, sp or special type of people to clean it up. And you just wonder, how can you live a life like that? I mean, most of us live fairly dull lives, and that's right. a good thing. But there's certain people, you're certainly one of them, and a couple of others we've talked about in our veterans group, you're called up in these situations where not only they're historic, they're life-threatening, and they're history-making. Mm -hmm. So how about first, Clint, introduce yourself, and then we'll go wherever you right. want to go. My name's Clint Williams. I served in the Army, and I've been here for about four years on uh, this side of the bridge in Queen Anne's County. And we're talking about it's a changing world. We had our coffee group today of veterans talking about scams. Mm -hmm. Intelligence gathering, military intelligence. You, you know a member of our veterans group who was doing what you were doing in the 60s, where you mm -hmm. were doing it much, much later, 40, mm -hmm. 30 years later, but still the same thing. Right. Gathering information. Right. It, it doesn't change, and it's human gathering. You know, it's nice to have all the gadgets we right. have, but it's still Clint reading the stuff and saying, hey, look, at, I think we better pay attention to this. Anyway, right. let me be quiet. What do you want to talk about? So I, I wanted to talk about... Um, an incident that happened to me when I was, so I left the military and I went to work for uh, the Department of Defense, basically doing the same thing I was doing in the military, just not having to put up with all, so a lot of the other stuff. gathering that was with it. military intelligence, and is that correct? Yeah, and providing yeah. Uh, support to um, DOD or Army uh, forces um, in transit or located in certain areas where it has a, a higher spots. threat level than, okay. than normal. Clint, so, let me ask you this. And I'm sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. From the layman, at any one time, you know, I look at the world, I see the Ukraine, I see what's happening in the Mideast, I see what's happening in Africa, uh, Central America, Latin. How many men and women, as we speak, just guess, having fun here, would be out doing gathering information to make our government be able to f function better? So I don't know the exact number of gathering, but I know that we do a lot of work with our partner nations, whether it be okay. training and um, trying to help them build their militaries so that we don't have to send people to all those locations right. to uh, get in harm's so way. So they and help send them us out. the information and we can look at it? Uh, it, there's a lot of sharing and yeah. stuff like that that As goes it on. Be. As yeah, it I mean, we can't be everywhere, no. uh, even though we'd probably like to be, but we can't. So You only have so many people, right? right. So many computers. So right. I, I interrupted. Go ahead. Tell me about this particular incident you want to tell me about. So, like I said, there's um, di different areas where there's a higher threat uh, concerned, where we have people down there doing those things, like, like I said, working with partner nations and so forth. Um, there's not really that presence to provide that uh, force protection, is the term I like to use, um, to ensure the safety of everybody. So, so men and women in uniform are being protected by you gathering information and it's, hopefully. It's not only by you know, the other service members, whether it be Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, okay. um, civilian uh, uniform also down uh, in these places providing okay. that support. So they're using their eyes, so the guys right. and gals in uniform, they're going to be a little safer doing whatever they're That's doing. That's right, okay. and it relies heavily on the, if there's a U.S. presence already there, whether it be the embassy or uh, stuff like that to, to assist in those sort of, sort of things. So doing my job, um, we covered Africa, and I was, for about nine years, my focus was on Africa, and they really, Africa didn't really have a lot of uh, primary focus. It was okay. shared between Europe, um, the mission there, which was always a higher priority. So the Defense Department, their infinite wisdom, decided that they needed to stand up organizations that solely focused on Africa. 
uh, not because we were going to invade Africa or build military bases down there and stuff like that. But other people but, are doing things that so we got to know right. what's going on. There's people throughout the globe, and we yeah. have people, whether it be a handful or more, uh, throughout throughout sure. Africa. So one of the places that was of great concern was uh, Mali. Yeah, help us with geography. Like most Americans, mm -hmm. I'm terrified. If Africa kind of shaped like this, where would we find Mali? So Mali is fully land border. There's no, no but it's water. on the west side. It's on the west side. On the okay. west. It's near Senegal. It's near uh, Mauritania. It's a, uh, land Faso, it's, it's a, a land landlocked country. Central Africa? Uh, Western. Western, okay. Western. Yeah, not, not all the way as, as Senegal, but a little bit inwards, but okay. no, like okay. I said, landlocked. And so we had been fighting and trying to uh, work with the French and others to uh, quell uh, Al-Qaeda in that area. So in northern Mali, uh, Timbuktu, which is not as far north, but other areas, there was... Great um, name, right? You're like Timbuktu. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the French were actively involved in uh, is countering this a the shooting, Is this a shooting yes. war? Is this a shooting war? Yes, yes. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think about it because we don't hear about it's it all the, the time on the news. The you know, the time. Yeah. Just because Al-Qaeda was in Afghanistan or there was Al-Qaeda in Iraq doesn't mean there's not Al-Qaeda in Africa or, in, okay. you know, like yeah. in, in that area, in, in the east and so forth. So that, that, a lot of that was going on, and so the threat was, was high. And one of our efforts was, was to try and establish a permanent presence down there to have people with my skills to work out of the embassy, um, mm -hmm. not just come down there on their own and try and do the so work. So you were assigned to the embassy? I was not. I was, oh, okay. I was working to establish that relationship okay. Okay. to have a permanent presence there to provide that support to the in-transit and other folks in that area. And one of the things that you do when you come into country, you coordinate with with the embassy for places to stay. So that normally they'll have hotels and lodging that are deemed safe. Safe houses, yes. Um, you know, due to, due to the threat. So I was uh, put in the Radisson Blue Hotel, which is, oh, not which bad. is a ni nice hotel. Nice hotel, yeah. very nice. You know, it it's not, might not be as nice as, say, in Greece or somewhere else, it's but, right. it, you know, it was the best thing they had going. Um, so I was there uh, for, I don't know, probably four or five days. But on the second day that I was there, uh, it was attacked by terrorists. Yeah, before we go in the, let me just, uh, just you hit a parallel here. Dennis, who you know, in our Veterans Club, he described, kind of like you did in Vietnam, mm -hmm. wartime Vietnam, he wasn't working in the embassy building. He wasn't working on a military base. He was in a building in downtown in the city of Vietnam. First floor was a business. Mm -hmm. They had offices and everything on the second floor. It right. was like your mom and pop shop, except the CIA is up in front, or the right. defense. Anyway, okay, okay. Anyway, so you're yep. basically living downtown. Yeah, this, I was just there for a short period of time, right. just some temporary duty, yeah. uh, and with the intent to speak with the ambassador and other members of his team to approve us having somebody join their team to provide. Yeah, support. you needed an ambassador's approval. To yes. The, oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so this okay. was. It wasn't just, like I said, just sending people down to go do the job. There's a lot of different wickets that you have to go okay. through to do this. Okay. So uh, we were supposed to meet um, in the lobby or in the restaurant at about uh, 7 o'clock in the morning to have breakfast and okay. talk about what we were like going to do that day. Like a working breakfast, yeah. Right. However, the night before we were there, somebody said, well, why don't we make it 7.30, which that turned out to be a good thing for us. So around 7 o'clock in the morning... Uh, I hear some racket. I hear some things that could have been grenades or okay. could have been other things. Obviously something a little different than yeah. the and, dishes falling. Yeah. But, you know, in my mind, I'd been to Africa so many times, I, I thought to myself that, you know, yeah. it's Africa. It could yeah. just be somebody yeah. doing some work or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really get too excited. And so then at about 7.20, 7.25, I decided I would go down there and, and uh, go meet up meeting. with the folks. Go That's right. And... So I got off the that elevator. Is, sir, the folks, the ambassador is this below? This is so the people level. that I'm going to meet with in the morning are just people that I'm with to okay. help. Oh, okay, your group, your group. Right, my group of folks. And so I take the elevator down to the atrium level, which is the second floor where the restaurant's on. And as soon as the elevator door opens, I notice the long hallway, the lights were out. And it was a little hazy, and I could smell... Something uh, wasn't right. Something, something wasn't, wasn't right. right, and I could smell. I, I, I knew what that smell was because I'd been around gunfire gun and explosions was, yeah. and stuff like that. 
but you know, I, me, I'm gonna go see what's going on. Sure. And so I walk down the hallway and I get to the atrium and it's eerily quiet in the hotel. There's nothing going nothing on. Nothing going. No, but nobody's nobody moving. No, it's it's uh, and it and it was interesting because when I left my room, you know how sometimes we leave our key cards and sure, we're like, oh, sure. we'll just go to the front desk and yeah, get another yeah. one. Well, I had forgot my key card and before I uh, the door closed, I said to myself, well, you you better go back and just grab your key card yeah. just in case. Yeah. And I was able to get back in my room right before the door closed mm -hmm. and grab my key card. Just all luck, all luck. Yeah, and uh, so I walk into the uh, to the atrium area. And the first thing I notice is the front doors and the front was all glass, and um, they were all busted out on the floor. They're blown out. So obviously something's going on. So, yes. So somebody came in and did something, but it still hadn't clicked in my mind. I wasn't. I was still calm. I um, I started to look around, and the, the restaurant was behind me, and I noticed the lights were out, and it was dark in there, and the doors were closed. And as I continued to scan the area, and you see nobody. No, you don't you see nobody. Not yet. And then okay. I start to see people uh, on the floor, on the floor below me, uh, shot and killed. Mm. You and actually saw dead bodies. Yes. And and that's when in my mind the adrenaline Something's, went. Yeah, okay. And I'm thinking, great. There was uh, some staircases that went down from the atrium to the first floor of the exit. But uh, quickly I thought that that probably wasn't my best uh, no. Choice to try and make Get a run out. for it because there could be some people underneath that I couldn't see that that might just shoot Take me in the back or something. And I noticed that the restaurant was smoky, and uh, that probably wasn't a good place. That's not to a be. good sign. So <laughs> I, I said, you know what? I just came down this hallway right here. I think that's probably it's my best be bet was to that's go back down that hallway. Yeah. And I'm praying that the elevator door opens, meaning that it didn't leave the floor and go somewhere else. Right. And sure enough, enough, it opened. And I was able to scurry back to my room and get in my room. Now, let me just say, the bodies you saw, people you knew, or these were just random bodies? No, these bodies? were just, so the Radisson Blue Hotel, people from all different nations oh, me uh, working yeah. for different missions, okay. meaning different okay. embassies or countries or United Nations or so forth, would stay in this hotel. And again, it was picked because this was supposed to be a safe a good, spot. good safe spot. Yes. Um, so I make it back to my room and I start Trying to figure now, out. Are you hearing anything? Or so uh, once I got back to my room, I started to hear gunfire again. Oh, you did hear gunfire. Uh, yes, and explosions. Um, the attackers obviously were armed with uh, machine guns and with grenades. Were uh, sirens or smoke alarms or anything going off? Not at that point. Okay. And it was still quiet. So okay. I, I went to my window and I looked out and I saw somebody kind of jog across the front parking lot area with a AK-47. Oh, okay. And now you was knew dressed in, that was a bad guy. Yes. Okay. That's what came into my mind, and I'm like, great, this is not going to turn out well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Did so you I, have a weapon in your room? Or are you going to tell no, me? No. Okay. No. And so I, I started to look, uh, got out my iPad, and started to see if there was any news or anything like that about an attack. Nothing. Nothing. Completely, completely quiet. Um, and. So then I had one of the people that was with me was uh, one or two doors down. And you know, I, I, this was probably a bad decision, but I decided from my hotel room uh, phone, I called his room okay. and he didn't answer. And that scared the death. That oh, scared. Something, something had happened to him, maybe. Yeah, or, or it, I mean, I was concerned that he didn't answer, but then also uh, afterwards, you know, he, he, he was scared to death and he wasn't going to answer the no. phone because he thought maybe they were calling to check see, and see if, if somebody people was were in there. the rooms yeah. and going to come and get him. So um, after that, I. I I came to the, when we travel in these uh, high threat locations, we would carry beacons with us. And these beacons were GPS and satellite uh, enabled. These are emergency beacons That's right. if you're in a spot. So you could push the button and then it would send a signal and your headquarters back, wherever you're hey, from. Something's, we'll go, get something's that going on something's here. On. That's right. And you can also text through it also. However, being inside the hotel, I was not able to gain signal on that device. It couldn't go through. Couldn't yeah. get out. No. Uh, I didn't have a patio or a deck or anything like that to walk on. So basically, that was useless. Useless, totally useless. Um, and I traveled with a cell phone, but it wasn't a really a worldwide. It was oh, an okay. Italian cell phone. In Italy, you prepay your phones, and if you run low on them, you just go and add some, more, some more euro money. to it. And, yeah. And so I checked the euro on my phone, and it had. I don't know, a no, euro, euro and a half or something. <laughs> You're in trouble. And 
or maybe a little more, maybe four euro, and, and sending text messages out of um, outside of Italy costs like three euros big bus, per text big message bus, or yeah. something. So I was not in a very good situation. Now, so, while, while you're doing all this stuff, is this noise? Stuff and sound going on, and I can smell, hear. Yeah, yeah intermittent. And then the fire alarm went off. Okay. So the terrorists had actually gone into the restaurant. Now, the right? terrorists were okay. Al Qaeda. The, they now, were did, you, did you know that immediately, or you just realized? Uh, I, I just assumed no idea. That, yeah. they, that that's probably what it was. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And so they had gone into the restaurant after they stormed the hotel and shot people on the front people. desk and went to the restaurant. And, you know, the restaurant was occupied at seven, in, or around sure. seven in the morning. So they Killed started them. shooting people in there, but a lot of people decided they were going to run down a hallway where a service elevator was, and they were caught and had nowhere to go, and that was their slaughtered. fate. They, yeah, they, got they just got uh, piles of people were Was were there any, out. I mean, you said this is a safe area. Was there any inkling that this might happen or no? You were in a safe spot. Well, if there previously a, there okay. had been attacks on hotels in the area. Okay. Um, in North Africa, there were incidents where tourists were on the beaches, um, but there were some attacks on hotels. So you knew it was similar. a possibility. It was a possibility. Possibility, but it's just in the back of your yeah. mind. And so yeah. one of the differences is, is you asked me if I had a weapon, and I didn't. So the mentality is completely different than going to Iraq or Afghanistan. Even though there's a war going on in the north of this country that I'm in now, and the threat level is elevated, um, my mentality is, is hey, everything's going to be, yeah, I don't, I don't be really easy, have to worry about it. Job. It's not like you're in Iraq and you're, and yeah. you're at this heightened They're sense. They're not going to hit us here, no. Right. And, and then also, you know, you, you've seen or you envisioned what the enemy or other locals are going to look like. Yeah. And these people in the hotel were business people. They were dressed okay. in suits and dresses. So I mean, nothing suspicious, nothing threatening, right. no, no alerts right. going on. But, it, but it's, it's a different mentality also for, um, you know, like if something like this would have happened in Iraq or Afghanistan, I would have been more expecting. And, it, and you would have had a weapon right. probably, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And yeah. so unarmed, unsafe, um, in an environment where there's Western dressed people, um, just was not not really not the healthy. same sort of thing, not healthy. right? And so I'm in my room, and and like I said, my phone had about four euro on it or something. So I said, you know what? The only thing I can do is I'm going to send a text message to a bunch of people back in Italy, and let them know what's going help. on, help. and tell them that I need yeah. help because I can't contact the other people, and I can't call the rooms. They're yeah. not, they're not going to answer. Yeah. So I had uh, sent a text. So here message. you are in Africa texting people in Italy. That's right. Basically telling them I'm at the Radisson Blue. <laughs> there's a terrorist attack going on. Um, who did, I, I who don't did have you? very much money I mean, left on my phone. Are these just friends or are these colleagues? Both. Oh, both. both. Okay. There was there was about four people I sent it to. Um, okay. And uh, you know, one guy said he was in bed <laughs> and he got the message and he jumped what? out of bed, you know, and threw his through his. I mean, I can on. imagine right now, like getting a phone, we get a thing from Dennis. Hey, Fred, yeah. I just want you to know, Symphony Village is under attack. Right. What? Right. And so he saw that I didn't have uh, money on my phone to continue to communicate. Yeah. So I had two or three people went and put a bunch of uh, money on my phone, oh, they could which do enabled that. me to. Um, At least they had the presence of mind to do that. I yes. wouldn't even have thought about that. Okay. Yeah. So that that was good. And so during this time, I was after that I got money on my phone, I was able to uh, reach out to people in the embassy. Okay. Um, and then also some of the other people that were with me. And I was in contact with people in the uh, back in Italy in my headquarters. Um, at this point, nobody was coming to rescue us. So you're just sitting in a room, smelling, hearing right. things, guns, fire going alarms up, going off, hoping you know, the heck someone's reading a text. I don't really. I was on the fifth floor. I didn't have anywhere to go. Mm. Um, I don't know how many there were. Did you hear it human was, voices at all? So yes, throughout yeah. the time period I was there. Um, I had heard voices. People, they were shooting on my hallway. Oh, you guys! Um, they were checking doors. They were. Mm. Uh, um, so they're going down your hallway, what, knocking on doors, going into rooms. Yes, and so there was a kind of a large hotel. Um, there were people that were found who had uh, had the the slide lock on their door and then had opened it and then been it been kill. shot and okay. um, things like that. Mm. But you know, I knew um, that there were people in. in Molly, that would do whatever they could to get you to come and get me. So I, I knew that inside me, and then it was reiterated by people at the embassy that I spoke to that they were coming. Were you able? Okay, so I guess my question: 
Finally, you got a hold of the embassy, and they're saying the cavalry's on the way. Oh, yes. Well. However, uh -huh. the backstory on that is is other people were there in the country to do their job, to do to do their thing, and just got a phone call and said, "Hey, you got a bunch of Americans under attack here." Right. And one guy said, "Well, I guess I better go get them." Yeah, these and were military or civilians. So or these were military guys. Okay. So fortunately, uh, in the country there were there was a. Uh, special Operations Army soldier, and there were some Marine Special Operations. And the Army guy said, hey, we're going to save these guys, and I don't care what anybody says. They just but, did this on their own. Right. And okay. a couple years prior, two to three years prior, there was a similar type event, not against a hotel, but in Benghazi, where the ambassador uh, was killed in Tragically. Benghazi, Libya. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody came to help Everyone them. Everyone waited. Right. Waited to make a decision, wait for air cover, whatever the story And I was, was involved in in Africa and, and had full vision on what yeah. was going on with that. And there was a change to not let something like that happen again yeah. okay. to ensure that... So out of that tragedy came a change. There was, yeah. right, that there was things in place. Okay. However, that, that didn't actually take <laughs> There's place. There's always a however with the government, right. isn't there? That always. didn't take place for... For me, it was just a few guys who said, we're not going to let this own. happen. And they have gear because of what they were down there to do. And so they were going to come How in close and rescue us. How close, mileage-wise, I mean, they, uh, mm -hmm. blocks from you or miles from you? Or? The embassy was within a mile. Oh, and so you're close. So, yeah, you not, must have heard the noise. Not too far, have, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you, you could hear it. Um, so they came in to try and get us. However, this was in the morning. Okay. And so what are we doing? About nine o'clock, ten o'clock. So about eight thirty. Oh, so we're uh, still nine o'clock. Um, I was told just hang in there. Uh, Hunker down. They'll be there soon. And now there this was, was there an was, individual community committee, or this was the embassy telling you that? This was individuals that Same. were part we're coming. of we're the coming. embassy okay. mission there okay. that were that were okay. telling me, not the individual that was coming. But uh, there was there was a large gunfight. Uh, in my stairwell that I could hear. Um, now, who would have been fighting? So th the special oper U.S. Oh, special operations were, were, were coming, uh -huh. and his name is Kyle Morgan. He okay. is a uh, retired U.S. Army uh, special forces soldier that uh, worked with Delta Force at the time. And uh, He was in the right place at the right time for you. That's right. Yeah. And... Um, basically geared up and said, we're going to go do this. Yeah, when, when, when you say, okay, is this a couple guys or just him? Or there was, there was three, guys, or? three guys, oh, and three then guys. there was also a diplomatic security. Okay, so these are also, armed people who trained yes. how to rescue people. That's okay. right, that's okay. right. Um, however, this is Africa, so it's not like you can go into the hotel and there's a map on the yeah. door that, you know, they, it, you they had added on to the hotel. Nothing was correct. The floors mm. were off. and you know, So these guys Africa are fighting and, their way in. They're fighting that's their right. way in. And so there was a huge gunfight and, you know, grenades and so forth. And I knew that that was them. Uh, however, they still didn't. They still didn't come. So we have some of the most well-trained people in our military that were fought off initially by these terrorists really? because the they terrorists had get... the advantage. The sure. terrorists were on the top of the stairwell. Shooting down. These guys were down there dropping grenades on them, um, stuff like that. Mm. And uh, to add another twist, you know, there was the political factor that comes into this. So we you got to check with some we tend politician. To want, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 that's exactly correct. If you look at our history, we always want the nation that we're supporting to lead the way yeah. and to do it, and right? Like in Vietnam, again, yeah. you know, we're going to train them and they're going to do yeah. it in Iraq, Afghanistan, all these places. So there was an optic that was going on mm -hmm. where we couldn't have these U.S. Storming, special operations guys Africa, storming yes. hotels, right. um, which to me is absurd because you have U.S. citizens, let alone, let alone Department of Defense intelligence personnel that are in this hotel. And you're worried about the optics of them going in. <laughs> you got to check them, right? some politics. Hey, is it okay if we go in and rescue our yeah. kids? Are getting slaughtered? Yeah. Well, and the Marines that were with them were getting phone calls from their headquarters back in Germany, telling them that it's not a good idea to do this <laughs> because and in the middle of a gun because they're going to ruin things that they've already established and oh. stuff. And so, the guy Kyle Morgan, the guy who's leading the charge, you know, has to worry about. The terrorists now, and now worry about these guys who might be thinking about they're going thinking that they're going to get in trouble. They're going to be trying to come rescue, yeah. you know, Americans, which is which is pretty bad. It's absurd. So, it's yeah, absurd. it's crazy. So the day goes on. I, I had uh, 
So how many are we, we about noon now? or is this uh, still... Yeah, going through there. You know, during that time period, I had been in contact. I could hear the terrorists um, Were you scared? below me. You know, it's a I mean, I would have been scared to death. Thing. Yeah. Um, I was resigned to the fact that I wasn't getting out of there. Oh, you really? You really? And, yes. Really? And so the longer that time it took, passed, the longer the better chance they had to get. I was to you. I was relatively calm and at ease. Oh, good um, for you. I was speaking to the people that I needed to speak to. Calm now, could you and talk in a normal voice or be hushed? So, I preferred to to send messages because I okay. didn't know if they could hear me talk. Okay, so they couldn't hear you if you're texting. So. Of course, this is kind of like a uh, comedy movie. I would get phone calls from my headquarters saying, "What's going on?" You, you couldn't know, and, answer. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, how am I supposed to talk when somebody's Some right guys outside, outside they the door looking for me? Right, exactly. So I had pulled stuff together and got it in my bag that I needed. That I thought if I did get out of there, like passport, you know, community yeah. charge, survival, stuff real like survival that, you know? stuff. I had water. I kind of. Uh, um, the beds didn't really have any room. There was really no place to hide in the so room. So you couldn't get so, under a bed. Uh, no. So I was able actually to slide under the bed a little oh, bit okay. and have water and stuff like that. And I would, I had a pen and I would write phone numbers that I needed to contact. Okay. And, uh, so you made like right a little operation me. center under a bed. Half right, under a exactly. Bed. I, you know, like I said, I had water and, um, and I'd also thought to myself that you know, if I go and uh, turn the deadbolt on this door and they come to my room and say they have a key card or something, they're going to realize that somebody's in there. Okay. So I'm thinking that my best bet is probably open just up. to leave it, leave everything open. Yeah. So if they come in and take a look, um, you know, I, I might be able to get out of there. Well, Worst case, I, they fire a couple rounds in the bed yeah. or they start flipping beds and stuff like that. So As I've interviewed people, how much of this is just luck? that they did or didn't come to your room, they came to somebody's else room and they murdered them. How is, is it luck you run down one hallway, you get away, the other yep. find is a dag burn locked door and here come right. the bad guys. That's it's right. luck. And, you know, come to find out they were targeting all, you know, Westerners, but also targeting uh, Air France's crew. So oh. at the Radisson Blue, Air France That's where they stay. is, stays there all the time. And they have an area which was the floor abo above me where they stay and on my side of the hotel and everything like that. So that was where they were, one of the places they were trying to get. And so for a long time, they were in the stairwell, not too far from my door, but actually right next to one of the guys I was with store, mm -hmm. they were holed up there. And you could hear them talking. Mm -hmm. I had heard yelling and uh, people speaking in English. And I was actually asked to try and get in contact with the guy who was a couple doors down to me because nobody could get a hold of him. Yeah. And so at this point, uh, there was four of us in there at the time. Two of them had got out really early in the morning. Um, so they were safe and gone. Right. And so basically there was like some people on my floor and there might have been some people above that, uh, that were still left in the hotel. But... You know, I'm thinking to myself, they want me to go check on this guy. There's no <laughs> Walk way down I can the hall. leave my no room. Way. No way. No way. I mean, I, I don't have any way to protect myself or anything like mm -hmm. that. And um, mm -hmm. it was pretty tough. But you felt, you personally were pretty calm and under control. I was pretty, I was pretty calm. You were trained. I, you know, I mean, I, you've been doing this for the, how many years in the military? You, yeah, you know. I, I was just, and I was resigned to the fact that, hey, it's going to happen. It's going to end. And plus the it's adrenaline, right? End. I mean, it, it, yeah, you're pumping, I mean, right? You're pumping adrenaline. I, you know, like I said, I was pretty pretty even keel at that point and uh, so now, I mean, I mean, is you married with kids at that point mm -hmm. did you call home we did no Fred no. I'm trying to survive mm -hmm. here I'm like I'm gonna okay so I did send a message um, and then somebody a friend of mine who worked for my organization went to uh, be with my family Clint I apologize we only got a minute left mm -hmm. it goes by that quick let's make a good ending to this set okay Let's remind the people what year was this again so this was 2015 Okay. And not that long ago. No. And this was front page news. It was all over uh, all TV over the news world. And, yeah. How many lives were lost that day? Twenty something. How many American lives? I mean, all Just lives. Just one were American uh, was. was yeah, you know, she was uh, working with the State Department or something like that. Not how, a federal employee. How many of the people working with your group? No, so no one was no, lost. No one. We were. We we were. End this up for it. I do apologize. Mm -hmm. How did it? How did it end well? Obviously, you're so here. So I was. I told them that I would send a message letting them know if they got me. So I, a couple <laughs> a couple times I had on my phone no. that, you know, they got here. me, and oh, I almost, you just and I almost the pushed the button. And so then it became a point where I said, "They're like, oh, don't worry, they'll be there in a minute." And finally, I said, "Hey, if you don't come up here in the next 15, I'm dead. 20 seconds, we're done on this I'm floor dead. because they're starting to rattle doors yeah, and do yeah. stuff like that." And then very shortly afterwards, they stormed up the stairs. They had uh, had Malayan Army 
uh, personnel, and there were French and others, and they chased them up to the next floor they isolated where they up. were able to finally take them out and okay. uh, end it. But that had gone on most of the day, and it wasn't until uh, mid to mid-afternoon where oh, we so you're talking about seven, eight, nine hours? Yeah, about hours. eight hours or so. And um, Clint, you, uh, you got to do me a favor. I'm sweating just listening no to problem. you. No problem. Do me a favor. Write a book. You and Dennis. I mean, most of us, and I got to finish here in about 30 seconds. The American public has no idea what's going on. I mean, you, we have Americans, obviously, in threatening positions all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just like, uh, you know, I get a nosebleed when I go up the stairs too quickly. We're talking about, th what, thousands of Americans are constantly in situations daily where their lives are threatened. Can I just add one more thing? But of course, of course. So Kyle Morgan, who led the effort, yes. received the Distinguished Service Cross, which is the second have. highest medal yes, below yes. the Medal of Honor, and one of the Marines that was with him received the Silver Star. Terrific. So their actions were rewarded, uh, rewarded and recognized, um, even though... Uh, their leadership probably wouldn't have had them do what they did. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Clint, thank you for another good story. Thank you. Uh, my name is Fred McNeil, and I apologize we have to leave early. It, would you please email Clint and tell him to write a book? Uh, thank you for watching QAC TV 7. name of the show is Thank You for Serving. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time, and I'd like to thank all the veterans out there.